Knowing when enough is enough in any walk of life is different and varies from person to person depending on their scenario and their personality. For me, when it comes to my passion, running, I'm most certainly guilty of being overly optimistic or certainly trying to ignore any pains or niggles or potential injuries and hoping that they'll just simply go away. And as a result of that ignorance and optimism, it has led me to here and the demise of my running and training over the past few months. And that previous mentality has led to this moment now to make this decision to say enough is enough. I need to do something about it. Hence, I'm here talking to you now, whilst walking slowly through a freshly slurried field. So please, have pity on me. Only joking, don't have any pity on me. It's all my fault. I take full blame for this. So after three months of uncomfortable, non-enjoyable, and sometimes worryingly painful running, I have made that decision that enough is enough. It's time to stop running, recoup, rest, and recover. This is my road to recovery. And over the next few weeks, I'll be recovering from shin splints. But first, I need to educate myself on what they are, so let's do that. Enjoy. Shin splints occur when athletes such as me try to train too much, too fast, or too soon. Shin splints, also known as medial tibial stress syndrome, which is a mouthful, is a common overuse injury that affects the front of the lower leg. It occurs when there's pain and inflammation in the muscles, tendons, and bones of the lower leg, specifically in the area along the inner border of the tibia, or shin bone for us. Shin splints occur due to repetitive stress on the lower leg. The exact cause of shin splints is not fully understood, well, at least by me anyway, but it's believed to be due to a combination of factors, including Repetitive impact activities, like running, jumping, or playing sports, can cause stress and microtrauma to the muscles, tendons, and bones of the lower leg, leading to the development of shin splints. So for this one, I don't think I've overtrained. I don't think I increased my speed too quickly, especially towards the end of last year, so I'm kind of ruling this one out. Flat feet, or overpronation, when the foot rolls inward excessively, can increase the stress on the lower leg and contribute to the development of shin splints. Now I do overpronate, so this is a possible cause. Wearing shoes that do not provide adequate support or cushioning can increase the risk of developing shin splints. Well, I did well over 800 miles last year in both pairs of my Hoka Speed Goats 4s, and that was in achieving my 2000 mile annual goal that I wanted to get to. The outer heel on both shoes wore away, which suggests I do overpronate, and that's always the case, that's usual for all pairs of shoes. So this year, maybe I just don't go to 800 miles per pair of shoes. We'll see. Increasing the intensity, frequency, or duration of physical activity too quickly can cause stress and microtrauma to the lower leg, leading to the development of shin splints. Weakness or imbalances in the muscles of the lower leg can contribute to the development of shin splints by increasing the stress on the affected area. I am definitely guilty of not doing any strength and conditioning outside of my running, certainly the whole of last year. I also never did any stretching or mobility, and I think this is a big contributing factor towards this onset of shin splints for me. And going forward, it's heavily factored into my recovery and training. Another piece of advice that obviously went over my head, it's important to seek medical attention if you experience persistent or worsening pain in your shins, as this can be a sign of a more serious underlying condition, such as a stress fracture. So certainly over the past few weeks, I've definitely been going backwards and forwards in my head um, thinking, is what I'm feeling a stress fracture? And to be honest, I'm still not entirely sure. The pain may be worse at the beginning of the activity and then subside during exercise, or it may subside when you stop moving. If the shin pain persists after you've stopped exercising, your shin splints are probably getting worse and you may be at risk of developing a stress fracture. The main symptoms of shin splints include the pain is usually located along the inner border of the tibia, shin bone, and may be a dull or sharp ache. So yes, I can confirm that is the location. Um, and it does hurt when I first start running, 
and it does dissipate somewhat once I've warmed up, but it doesn't go completely. So for me, it's not too tender to the touch, but it is localized to the sort of upper inner side of my lower leg around here. But when I'm pressing on it now, it's not hurting. About a week ago, it was hurting when I was going upstairs, especially if I was on my toes, but that's gone now. There may be some swelling on the inner border of the tibia and mild to moderate discomfort whilst doing physical activity. So the pain will improve with rest and it'll get worse with activity, particularly high activity or high impact sport. Spoiler, I've not prevented shin splints. However, here are some steps to prevent the development of shin splints and probably some that I should have taken on earlier, but are now very much focused on doing. Wear proper footwear. Make sure to wear shoes that provide adequate support and cushioning for your feet, especially if you participate in high impact activities. The Hoka Speedgoat 4s have always been comfortable, cushioned and reliable for me, so I won't be changing those anytime soon. And I've currently got two new pairs, one of which I'm running in now and one which I'm saving for when the time comes this year. Avoid increasing the intensity, frequency or duration of physical activity too quickly as this can put excessive stress on the lower leg and contribute to the development of shin splints. I haven't really run for weeks now. Yes, I did a 40 mile ultramarathon race uh, towards the end of January, but prior to that, I hadn't run for three weeks. Since the race, I have rested continually. Um, on some of my dog walks, I have broke into a jog just to see what it's like and it hasn't felt quite right, so I just stopped. Hence, I'm gonna rest properly and recover the correct way. Regularly perform exercises to strengthen the muscles in your lower leg. This will help prevent the development of muscle imbalances and reduce the stress on the affected area. This is definitely key for me and three times a week I complete strength, conditioning, mobility, stretching and some massage exercises. This will now be ongoing and form part of my training plan and I'll be covering what I do in these sessions in more detail in the coming videos. Make sure to properly warm up before participating in physical activity to help reduce the risk of injury. Give your body enough time to rest and recover, especially if you experience pain or discomfort in your shins. Now I'm rubbish when it comes to rest. I'm also impatient. It seems like sometimes I'm resting for weeks and weeks with no improvement, but on this occasion, I'm gonna to have to just wait it out. If you have flat feet or overpronate when you walk or run, consider wearing orthotics or arch supports to help correct your gait and reduce the stress on the lower leg. Cross training can be used as long as it's low impact activities like swimming or cycling. This will help reduce the stress on your lower legs and prevent overuse injuries, just like shin splints. If you think you have shin splints, it's important to take the following steps. Give your lower leg enough time to rest and recover. Avoid taking part in activities which cause pain or discomfort. Apply ice to the affected area 20 to 30 minutes several times a day to reduce pain and swelling. I don't do this and I never have. That's just me being honest. Over-the-counter anti-inflammatories such as ibuprofen can help reduce pain and swelling associated with shin splints. Yeah, I guess that's a thought and if I remember on my next run I might try it out and see if it makes any difference. But I don't want to become reliant on it or try to cover up any pain that's telling me something's not quite right. Your doctor or a physical therapist may recommend exercises to help strengthen the muscles in your lower leg and reduce the stress on the affected area. Yeah, so as mentioned earlier, this is key for me and having seen a specialist just before Christmas, I've got some great exercises which I'm continuing to do and will continue to make part of my training plan. I'll be covering these in more depth in the next video. So I'm just reading some advice here. It says, um, most importantly, don't try to power through shin pain. I mean, this statement is most definitely aimed at me because that's exactly what I did. Instead, take up a no impact activity like swimming or yoga. Well, I guess I could try yoga, but swimming's not an option for me really. Um, and wait while your shin heals. Now, obviously if I jump back into running too soon, uh, I'm just gonna have the same injury and it's just gonna take longer to recover. Now, I should know when it's time to get back to light running when my leg feels as strong as the other one. I guess it doesn't hurt when I'm running. It's not tender to touch on a daily basis and I can do my normal routine going upstairs, jumping over stiles, playing with the kids or just jogging in general without pain. So we'll have to just test that as the weeks go on. 
So that's just an introduction to shin splints. It's educated myself on what it is and the symptoms and how I've actually managed to get this unfortunate injury. In the coming videos, I'll go into a lot more detail about the exercises, the strengthening, the conditioning, and the stretching that I'm doing. And the road to recovery has just started. So thanks for watching and stay tuned.